Hello beautiful people. So I'm going to show you an IMF creation and a couple of tools. In this series we're just going to do Resolve Studio 16 and we're going to do Autodesk Flame as well. Now Adobe and Apple haven't come to the party just yet but I can only assume with Final Cut Pro 10, um, 10 .5, I think it's 10.5 coming out, that might have an opportunity to do it. And I can only assume Adobe is looking at this. So I'm just going to focus on Resolve Studio on this video and I'm going to focus on a single export of an IMF. And in the next video, we're actually going to look at the supp supplemental packaging as well, which I'll explain in a longer one. So it's going to be quite a short video just to kind of go over the basis of IMF and kind of the structure it and how you can look at it. And then the next video after this was going to be a more detailed how you manipulate around it. So what is IMF? IMF in the previous video showed as an operable media format. And what I'm going to do is demonstrate in um, Resolve Studio 16. I have the studio version, so it's going to be um, unwatermarked, but you can do the free one as well. Anyway, so let's get some, uh, some footage into this. So we will go and grab some footage off here. And I'm going to grab just a sedan at this stage, just a good old fashioned single frame. And I'm going to make a timeline out of that. So you can name it anything you want. This is not a problem at this stage. So, oh. I think we might even add the T. I don't think T's are any more value these days. There we go, so there's a master. Double click on your timeline. There's your time. don't even have any audio. It doesn't really matter for this, this stage of a demo. So there's our file, it's ready to rock. All we need to do now is go to our delivery page and then through here, you've got a lot of options you can do. What I wanna bring your attention to is IMF. Now in the most recent version, there's actually um, presets for Netflix and 21st Century Fox and what have you. So um, I like to go into the generic one and kind of work the problem from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to name this uh, file name. Let's be quite creative. Wow, wow, there is no flies on me today. Um, actually, a bit dyslexic this morning, people. So I'll actually call it Deliver Commercials. So we'll do a DNS. So there we go. Now, all I need to do is browse to where I want to put this folder and it will be a folder. So I'll put the desktop and then I'm going to do my video. Now, at this stage of the game, it's only going into JPEG 2000 at this stage. Um, you can use EasyDCP, but Kakadu is an open source one, so that's fine of us. This is where you can actually crack down on all your options. We're not going to go into Dolby Vision any way, shape, or form, but um, you can pick which one you wish. This stage, I'm going to do a YUV uh, 4 to 2 HD because it's going to be for broadcast. Down through here, you can actually collect your broadcast in this. And if I swing on down, 10-bit broadcasts, and I'll just make this 100. Because um, at this stage, the broadcast commercials that we have in HD, the highest bit rate is 100 megabits. You can deliver a ProRes, but I'm saying an ABC intra, which is DPP spec, is 100 megabits. So down here, now this would normally kind of be folded up. You don't need to do this, but I think it's really clever you kind of have a look at this. It is guided towards the, um, the movies but you could utilize this as a commercial section for it. So the title could be the UK clock, could be ISC, could be ad ID, whatever you want. Um, audio is gonna be stereo. And a majority of them through here, you don't really need to actually add any more. It's kind of cool, but with movies, obviously there's gonna be a load more things you can do. Facilities, all sorts of wacky stuff. So I'm gonna leave it as that. The issue can be DC demo. And I'll show you why this is all kind of cool. Um, content. Originator is, whoop, DC me, do DC me. And it's an advertisement that we're doing. So the content display label, this is another interesting version. So this could probably be version one. Um, I could do BMW. Okay. The next one, you don't want to be touching any of these guys unless you want to really annotate it into the next week, but we don't need to in this case. So we've got all this fun stuff here. We just add it to the queue and we press the magical go button. So the magical go button is only a couple of seconds. So it'll fly through exactly what we want to do. So how do we deal with this? So out on our desktop, we've got a folder called DC Masters. That's what we named it for, okay? So in here are all these lovely files. And you go, what in the kajibas does all this mean? Well, asset map, as we'll see, it is kind of a an overview of where the files are and where they live. Again, everything is in a kind of a root folder structure, so it's not really, this is linked to SAS 29 or 
you know, NAS23 or whatever, it's all that way. There's your video and there's your audio. It is mute, so there's no um, audio on this per se, but it still spits out this file by automatic. CPL, OPL, and um, PKL are the ones we want to look at. If I open my CPL, it'll be a jargon of XML gorgeousness, okay? Here's the fun bit. Telestream Switch, which I paid nine bucks or 10 bucks for, you can actually grab the CPL, drag it down, and it's gonna moan and basically say, hey, listen, um, this is gonna be watermarked. So you pay an upgrade for this to actually get without, without a watermark because Switch can play through an SDI thing as well, so that's quite cool. And there's my file. So I actually haven't loaded up a video file to it. If I wanted to, I could probably grab my video file, double click on that, and it would load up in here as well. Now, opening up the CPL in Switch is going to be beneficial on the supplemental packaging because the CPL will actually drive where the video files and audio files live to concatenate it together on the fly. So that's kind of the cool part of it all. But what I want to show you in here is if I open this, I think I've got it open to um, Xcode, more than likely. I'll do this, Mr. Clicky Clicky. Now, up on the CPL, there's my data that I added in here. So this data can actually be used for searching criteria in the future. So you could be putting any bit of information in here. I put actually a clock in here to start it with, to kind of start the conversation. Here's another clock, there's an advertisement. Um, this is the issuer. So in the future, you could be uploading these packages. These unique identifiers could be utilized as add IDs, clock, clappers, whatever you want to do that nature, and also differentiate between them on what needs to be what version. So that's kind of really cool. And down through here, you can actually see if I grab my, um, my video here and I come and do a bit of a search. There's where it's all lying. So the resources are here. It's saying it's under this UID here. That's the MXF. This is actually running at 24 frames um, because it was just a still and I just grabbed it. And here's your audio one in front of here as well. So we'd look for uh, for F and there's the audio there. So everything has a place in IMF. This is the whole key point of it all. You don't want to be doing flat files and moving them and adding them to this. This will be the, um, the kind of the lighthouse to all the information is. Now the source duration, that's very interesting. And in the next video, when we start doing supplemental packaging, it'll actually show you where the offset or where the videos came in and how you could actually utilize that. So hopefully this is a kind of a good overview of IMF out of Resolve Studio. Um, I'm gonna do the supplemental package very soon and show you that in the next video. And then we'll actually show Flame just doing the final export as well. So as always guys, hope you have a great day.